Hello everybody, welcome if you're new here and welcome back if you're not. My name is Carly and today I am going to be talking to you about how to write a personal statement. So for those of you who don't know me, I am a 0L and this channel is just, you know, a little fun time to show you my journey through law school. Thank you for joining me. As of right now, I would say my videos I apologize for there not being many of them. I don't really know what to film, so please, please, if you have ideas, oh my god, my patchy ass fake tan on my hands. It looks good everywhere else, just ignore my hands. I need to not talk with my hands in this video. Yes, so there aren't many videos right now and I apologize for that. I really just don't know what to film, like there will be a lot of content obviously in the fall. When I start school, I'm gonna take you guys with me. I'm gonna vlog all of that. And in the summer, I'll vlog like my prep for law school, my law school prep, everything I'm doing to prepare. But there's still that like awkward in between where I don't know what y'all wanna see. If you wanna see travel vlogs, let me know. I mean, I'm not going anywhere like insane, but like I'm not going to Thailand or anything like that. But I will be going on some little trips here and there, so if you're interested in watching those, um, let me know. I'll film them, I'll post them if anyone wants to see them. So don't get mad if those come out and you're like, that's not law school related. It's fine. You'll still get law school videos. So to me, a personal statement is one of the most important parts of your application. Sure, grades, LSAT score, resume, that's all very important. But I've heard from multiple deans at like five different schools that I've been talking to or that I've seen on YouTube that the personal statement is what ties your whole application together. They could see your grades, they'll read your transcript, they'll look at your resume, they'll look at your LSAT score, and then they'll rely on the personal statement to really get a sense of who you are. Law schools are looking for more more people who can contribute to the alumni network, who can contribute to the school's diversity, that can contribute to clubs or extracurriculars that the school offers. They're looking for people to add to the school community. Obviously grades and LSAT score matter and they matter most, arguably, but I think the personal statement and the resume, but mainly the personal statement, kind of get tossed aside. It's like something that you know you have to do, but if you have good grades and a good LSAT score, you're like, do I really have to write a good personal statement? Yes, you do. I definitely think the personal statement is what got me in. I had a decent LSAT score and I had that 19 point increase, which you can watch more about. I'll link my video down below. I think a big part of me getting in is my personal statement and the way it tied the rest of my application together. Hearing from deans that they rely on the personal statement to tie together or to fill in um, missing spots or to fill in the blanks from the rest of your application helped me tremendously to figure out what to write in my personal statement. I've kind of broken down what I did into phases. So the first phase is to brainstorm. The second phase is to draft third phase is to structure and the fourth phase is to finalize and so starting with brainstorming this can take however long you want it to personally I started brainstorming before I even started studying for my LSAT I was always kind of like hmm what should I put in my personal statement to kind of procrastinate studying for the LSAT sometimes so for months I thought about what I should write and I had so many things. If you're like me and you do a lot and you've done a lot of things like things that inspired you. When someone asked what's something you've done that inspires you, it's hard to think of one thing because you know, I tried to fill my life from when I was younger with things that were inspiring um that would motivate me to do better in every aspect of my life. So, I had a lot of ideas swirling around in my head because I've done so much extracurricular wise, volunteer wise, job wise, um, academically, I've done a lot. And if you're someone who hasn't done a lot, 
your problem might be the opposite problem. My problem was that I had so many ideas I couldn't narrow it down. There was no one thing that stuck out until I really thought about it. But if you're the opposite, you might have the problem where you don't know if you've done anything in your life that would be significant. And I think that's because a lot of the time when you hear about or when you look up personal statement examples, you see Olympic medalists or people who, I don't know, volunteered in Yemen. I don't know. <laughs> Just people who have done things that to you, you're a normal person. You're like, that sounds like something I could never do. Sorry, I have a hair. To a normal person, that sounds like something that you, you know, I've never done anything like that. Or maybe people write about their traumas um, and you don't think anything very like traumatic happened to you. Or like you think about it and you're like, oh, like my parents are together. Or like, you just, don't write about your parents' divorce, okay? <laughs> don't do it. Um, unless something crazy happened, don't do it. Like you're like, oh, my parents are together and I haven't struggled with money and, you know, no one close to me died. I've never had it, you know, something like that. That's okay. This is what the brainstorming phase is for. Like I didn't only focus on brainstorming and nothing else. My brainstorming phase was for the days that I didn't feel like studying for the LSAT. So if I woke up and I was like, I really don't feel like studying for the LSAT today. I know that I'm not gonna do well. I know that I'm not gonna absorb anything. I used those days to brainstorm my personal statement. I used those days to relax and to just write stuff out, write out ideas, make like those thought webs. <laughs> so that's what I did to, you know, get my brain juices flowing. I, I wish I could show you the thought web, but I was so done with the process that I deleted everything. So <laughs> I can't show you. Um, but yeah, I had like 30 thought webs maybe. Like, I mean, I made a different one every day. But I made a different one every day and I noticed that I would cut down and I like the thought webs kept getting smaller and smaller. Originally, they were getting bigger and bigger for like the first 10. And then it seemed like I kept cutting down ideas. Like I would realize, oh no, that's not really something I want to write about. Or would they enjoy that? I don't know if someone else would understand the significance of that. And I knew from the beginning that I wanted to write about a specific event or something I did, some part of my life that meant a lot to me and tied into why I might want to go to law school. Okay, side note, I wrote nine personal statements because all of the schools needed two and then two of the schools needed three, but the third was very, very short. It was like a diversity statement almost. They didn't call it that, but it, that's basically what it was. But my personal statements, the separate essays, mind you, most of them short, there were nine of them. So I'll get into what I did. I kind of mentioned this in another video, but basically I did two separate stories and then I altered them for the school I was writing them for, if that makes sense. I had two different storylines. One was when my mom wasn't allowed on an airplane. Or Syrian. It was four years after 9-11. Anyway, so that was one. And how that event kind of shaped my perception of our heritage and I mean, I was six, right? So like, I wasn't deep thinking when I was six. I mean, maybe I was compared to some other kids, but I wasn't thinking, oh my God, that's racist when I was six. But as I got older and like, yeah, I'm not gonna get into it. It's a bit too personal for me to get into for YouTube. I'm not gonna read either of my personal statements. I was going to, but one of them mentions people that I don't want those people to know I wrote about them. <laughs> and the other, uh, it's just too, too personal. But basically, I wrote about an event, that airport thing, and then I wrote about the time that I, uh, coached a cheerleading team. 
I called it adaptive abilities in the personal statement. It was actually called the special needs cheerleading team. I guess for athletes with disabilities would probably be because adaptive abilities would imply that there were people on the team who were not disabled, but it was all adults and a few children with disabilities on the team. So that's what it was. I coached it for five years. I was, well, I was an assistant coach for most of that time, but for two years I was head coach. And um, I wrote about that and how much of an impact that had on who I was and how I would use those traits in the field of law. So those, that, in a nutshell, that's how I related my personal statements. The event, I related it to um, how it altered my perception on law as I got older, on human rights, all that jazz. And then the second one was how it added to who I was, formed who I was, and how that relates to what kind of lawyer I want to be. That is how my personal statements shaped out. That's the kind of thing I wrote about. So in my brainstorming, I almost said brainwashing. <laughs> I'm scared that I, now that I say that, I'm scared I said brainwashing in the rest of the video. I'm going to be thinking about that the whole time. <laughs> it really ended up coming down to, I think, about six ideas that I had by the end of my brainstorming where I was like, okay, I think I can confidently write about all of these situations. And I think all of these situations show who I am. And I think I'm ready to draft a few essays using all of these ideas and then choosing which one I can write best about. So there we go. Brainstorming done. I've already tried to film this video and I'm terrible at sticking to the structure. So I'm really trying to do that. I get so, like, I just go off on tangents. I don't know. I don't have ADHD. There's some sort of deficit there. Um, anyway. So for drafts, after I brainstormed and I realized I had six or so ideas that I knew I could write about, I just word vomited on the page, like every night or the days that I didn't want to study for the LSAT, I just wrote. I just wrote about all the ideas and it ended up being those two that I mentioned that I could write for a long period of time about, that I could write, like it basically came down to me not being able to really show who I was, show who I am with those like four other ideas. I could write about them but they didn't really show anything about me. They showed that I had been through something or that something had shaped me in a way, but it, I couldn't tie it to law in a way that talked about me. I'll get into that. One of the ideas, for example, was about my sister and my mom. And my mom struggled with mental health my whole life. My sister is disabled and so my mom, she tried very hard to take care of us and she did a good job overall. I kind of took on the role of second parent, uh, which a lot of older siblings do, but with my sister being disabled, it was a different dynamic. Like I will never have the same sisterly bond that other sisters have. My sister will always be more like a baby sister, even though she's 21. Ew. <laughs> I hate thinking about her being old. That dynamic really added to who I am, formed who I am even. I would not be the same person at all if I didn't have to take care of my sister, if I didn't have to be my mom's rock. Like I would not be the same person if I didn't witness my mom go through the things she did or have to be a caregiver. I would not be the same person. I have no regrets or hard feelings about my upbringing at all. I really value actually the lessons it taught me, but that was what I was going to write about and say those things, but it became more about my mom and my sister, more so my sister. I like touched on my mom in this draft, but like it was mainly about my sister, but it became more about them than it did about who I was. It showed 
it showed that I that I was that person and that's why, which is great, but it didn't show why I wanted to be a lawyer. And that's kind of the point I'm making is through these drafts, through making so many drafts, I mean so many, and they don't have to be structured because you'll structure it after. Just write out, write stuff out. You'll notice what ideas show why you want to be a lawyer and who you are and how that really, you know, how the two relate. If you think an idea isn't coming to the conclusion you want it to, just scratch it and focus on drafting with the other ideas. But you want your personal statement to show who you are. And it's okay if you mention other people. Like I said, in my cheer coaching thing, um, I mentioned the athletes and how they, you know, how I adapted for them and how I enjoyed watching them learn and how I enjoyed picking apart their skills and using things to their advantage to make them better at what they were trying to do, you know. Um, but in doing that, it was still about me. Whereas the draft about my sister or my mom, or even like I did one about my grandmother and my grandfather, it was more about them and I couldn't draw any conclusions other about myself other than the fact that it shaped who I was. But there was nothing showing the admissions council like, oh, this shaped who she was and that's why she wants to be a lawyer. This shaped who she is and that's why she'll be a good lawyer. Those other ones didn't show that. It showed who I am, but it talked too much about the other person. So you want to avoid, if you're writing about someone else's impact on your life or something else's impact on your life, you want to really still focus on yourself. In that, you don't want to draw too much attention to the other person or thing because it doesn't actually show what you wanted to show. You don't, you also don't want to tell them either. Like, you don't, you don't want to, you know, just be like, I did this. This is why it would make me a good lawyer. You need to show them why it would make you a good lawyer. That's just good writing. You want to talk about how it shaped you, how it influenced you, and then talk about why those traits would make you a good lawyer. Not just that this thing that happened would make you a good lawyer. You don't even say that. Just show it in your writing. If you want writing tips, I guess I can put them in another video. Yeah, I'll put them in another video. So if you want like writing tips, let me know. I did journalism as my undergrad. I've always been a writer. I've had jobs being a writer and being an editor. So um, yeah, I'll give you some editing tips in this video, but overall writing tips, I can make another video on it if you want. Yeah, after you've made an insane amount of drafts and you feel like you've written till your heart's content or not even content, until your heart is very angry that you're not done this process yet, then you can move on to structuring your draft. So if you're like me and you need a few different personal statements, that are different because again I needed two per school so I couldn't just use the same one over and over again. I used the same ideas per school but I still had to change it um, for the school that I was writing about because each one had a different word count, had a different like thing that they wanted in it and luckily the ideas I chose could be used universally like it could be they could be used for any of the essays but I still had to like cherry pick like which idea I wanted for which paper obviously but after my drafts I took apart I, I reread the drafts the recent drafts because you don't want to reread the ones from the beginning when you were trying to figure out what you wanted to write about but the recent drafts I read through them and I basically copy and pasted the things about them that I liked into a separate document and then once I had that, that would be my root copy. And then I would add to that, structure it, you know, I did the kind of intro, outro, three paragraph. Um, it's a classic. It works. There's a reason why they teach it. Also, my cat's in the litter box. So you probably hear him kicking his big old feet. Um, so if you're wondering why it sounds like digging in the background, that's what that is. So I structured everything from my drafts into two separate documents because I had two separate ideas. So anything I liked from the drafts, I copy and pasted into these documents. I structured them so that they would look like an actual essay. I 
reread how it sounded after structuring it and I added to it. I basically, I wrote an actual essay at that point using the root copies I had Frankensteined into the documents. And so once I started actually writing, it was nice to see everything come together. It was this huge sense of relief to be like, wow, that actually sounds good. And like, things are flowing nicely. And once so structuring was like the least amount of time I took, I basically it was like two nights of just copy and pasting stuff. That's all my structuring entailed. And then I finalized everything. So I then personally, I don't know if you're going to end up having to do this. So if if you're Canadian and you're applying to multiple schools, you'll have to do this. But I don't know enough about how it works in the US to know if you'll have to do this. But when you're done structuring and you have your structured root copy that is universal per school, you haven't added stuff about school specific jazz yet, you just have your root copies, okay? I then made nine titled documents in my, I use Word, um, and I titled it like school number one. So like Osgood number one, Osgood number two, TMU number one, TMU number two. And that's what I planned to finalize my essays in. So I copy and pasted the root copies that I wanted to use into those documents that were titled by school and by number. Then I finalized them by making them school specific. So if there was something specific the school wanted me to touch on, I would put it in that and I would make it flow so that you couldn't tell I just copy and pasted an essay in there and then wrote a bunch of stuff. Like I didn't just copy and paste it and then write stuff on the bottom. Like I tweaked it so that it would line up with what the school wanted me to write about. So that took me like two weeks because it would have taken me longer. I would have liked to spend longer on this. Um, but I wrote my LSAT in October and my um, applications were due November 1st. So I only had the two weeks between after I wrote my LSAT to November 1st to finish everything. So in the two weeks between writing the LSAT and applying to law school, I had no choice but to cram in the finalizing, the, the final step of my personal statements between that time. Because I wasn't going to spend vital prep time working on that when I had already, like at this time I had already had the drafts, I already made those. And I already divided the drafts, like the structured drafts into the respective documents. So all I really had to do was edit and tweak to match the school. The whole two weeks, like I, every single day I worked on it. Um, I already had my resume done and obviously like I'd written the LSAT and I had my transcript in. So that was the last thing I did and yeah, I could have spent more time on it. Like looking back, if I had the option to, I would have obviously taken that because I wouldn't have had to cram it in. And in the two weeks between my LSAT and uh, applying to law school, my uncle died, my dog died, my grandmother's dog died, <laughs> and my sister's best friend died. In that like two weeks and I couldn't I, I didn't have the emotional capacity to deal with any of it I couldn't I just I had to pretend none of it was happening so that I could hand in my application because it was the only thing that mattered to me in that moment honestly I still haven't really gotten to process any of that loss um yeah so that's that's how my law school application went and that's really all i did for my personal statement and i know like all i did like i just told you four different phases and how i did them and how it took me months but do take your time edit 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 check 
everything over and over and over again. Reread it and reread it. Get other people to read it because chances are if you've reread it so many times, you already know what it's supposed to say. So if there's a typo, you're not going to catch it. The human brain does this lovely thing where it skips over typos to make the thing make sense. <laughs> but like, you need to know that the typos are there. So having other people read it is fantastic. I had probably like four, four or five people read it. But get people to read it that aren't going to be focused on pleasing you. Like, don't get your crush to read it or anything. Or like parents, usually parents, I mean, my mom will tell me when there's a typo, but my dad won't. So only get people who would do that for you to read it. Don't waste your time getting people who will be like, oh, that's awesome. Or people who maybe don't have a, an academic background and wouldn't know what a piece of good writing is like. Maybe people who don't know you super, super well. Like maybe coworkers, because coworkers know you well enough to read the thing for you. So, but they'll also, they don't know you well enough to just assume things like, the problem is when you have to show who you are, when you're getting someone to read it that knows that it, it's ingrained in them who you are, they're going to fill in the blanks and they're going to make assumptions because they know who you are. You need to get someone to read it who's going to be like, oh yeah, this shows who you are. Or yeah, this showed me something about you. You need someone to read it who's not going to be like, oh yeah, I already knew that. Thank you so much for watching this video and joining me on my law school journey. If you want to subscribe for more, feel free. Leave me a comment with any suggestions or requests for future videos. There will be lots more videos to come. Right now, there's just not a lot of things I'm doing that are law school related. So I felt like no one would want to watch it. But if you want to see a travel blog or travel vlog, let me know. I'd be happy to post that. I might anyway. I just didn't want you guys to be like, Oh, she's a travel vlogger now. I'm going to do a video soon on how I'm preparing for law school. So um, give me a thumbs up if you want to see that. And yeah, I hope everyone enjoys the rest of their day.